Today we are going to do some voltage testing on the Ryzen 7 2700X and the Gigabyte's uh, X470 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard and find out whether voltage readings in software in Windows and those of a proper digital multimeter differ and whether we can rely on software readings or whether we cannot. That's the gist of this video. There are a couple of other things I'm testing in there but that's basically it. The other thing I'm going to test is load line calibration and different voltage levels for you guys to know how voltage regulation works on this particular motherboard and what load line settings and voltage settings you should be using and what you're going to actually be getting measured with a digital multimeter. For those of you who like to scroll past all of this and find out the conclusion, well, I'll just tell you right now, software perfectly reads voltage. Don't bother watching the rest of the video. Just turn it off, go forward or watch a sous vide cooking video or something like that and I'll go through all the details with my loyal audience so goodbye guys one eternity later just counting down waiting for these guys to leave oh, I think they all left right I lied sorry about that yeah voltage reading nah it's rubbish. Uh, you need a <clears throat> digital multimeter to get actual real voltage readouts and there is a huge difference between what software reading or readouts show and I'm going to use three popular software programs which people use including a lot of reviewers online and I'm going to compare those readouts with a digital multimeter or actual readouts of what the voltage really is. For this video our friends from Cooler Master have sent us their latest RGB water cooling kit to cool this overclock 2700X and the Aorus um, X470 motherboard. Thank you Cooler Master. We're making two changes in BIOS. One is the CPU V core, and the other one is CPU clock ratio. CPU clock ratio will make it 4.2 gigahertz, and in voltage settings, CPU V core we're setting 1.45. We're not touching anything else. Save exit. So we've set 1.45 in BIOS. Fluke is showing 1.425 to 1.427 it seems. And we're about to run a scene of inch as well. 1.423 to 1.427. Let's run some scene of inch. So I usually wait until a few squares of Calculated so it's stable at 1.379 to 38, 1.379 to 1.381, and we're back to odd voltage. All right, let's go over these results. So <clears throat> So initially what I've done is I've tested, tested uh, CPU V-Core megahertz load line calibration at 
auto just to see how everything behaves and as expected the V core was fluctuating between about 0.46 to 1.39 measured and 1.26 uh, under load using Cinebench R15. In software the readings were as you can see uh, uh, different so HW info was showing an idle between 0.4 and 1.474 uh, huge overvolt if you didn't really you know actually have a way to measure it under load it showed similar similar uh, voltage to what the real voltage was it was showing like, as if it was overvolting as well which it wasn't so um, 1.265 to 1.287 when in fact it was about 1.262 so uh, software CPU ID hardware monitor again uh, 0.4 to 1.5 and load was all over the place 1.27 to 1.34 and CPUZ much the same so just from this first instance you can see that uh, software readouts had a much higher swing up and down so in the video I just did I showed you 1.45 and as stated with load line calibration at auto it is expected that the vCore load will drop because it's using one of the lower levels of load line so in idle 1.423 to 4 to 7 so very stable idle voltage <clears throat> and under load again very stable 1.38 uh, not much variance there if you were to believe software uh, again HW info 64 seems to be the closest to what's being said but it's still off it's either showing um, over vaulting or under vaulting it's just not on the mark uh, a CPU ID and CPUZ are just completely wild um, under load CPUZ and CPU ID was spiking 1.45 which is absolutely rubbish and if you didn't have a way to actually measure uh, voltage you would have been thinking that this motherboard is over vaulting your CPU to 1.45 volts uh, which is not true um, so <clears throat> what I did after that was I decided to test load lines so as you can see my V core here was set to 1.4 in this testing so the only thing I did or change here was my load line calibration settings just to give you an idea of what each different level of load line does and what I've discovered here is that normal standard uh, and medium load line is exactly the same thing i'm not sure if uh, the gigabyte bios uh, engineer intended it to be like that but to me it just seems like there is uh, no need to have three different named settings which do exactly the same thing so what this person could have done is just remove i will suggest to the gigabyte bios team to remove the normal and standard and um, it's just weird having so many different settings here and just leave auto which will then default to medium uh, and so at medium setting 1.4 you can see that here at auto settings on load line calibration uh, you are getting very much the same voltage as you are on medium and also these as well so in terms of low load line calibration you the the voltage did drop a little lower which is exactly what it should be doing so under idle it was a little bit lower but under load it was definitely uh, 0.02 volts lower than standard or medium or normal uh, which is what you'd expect now <clears throat> the high load line 
increase the voltage a little. So you saw 1.38 uh, idle and 1.346 to 348. So we're starting to uh, slowly get a little higher, but you're still 0.5, uh, sorry, 0.05 volts uh, under what you're setting in BIOS when you're using high. When you get to turbo in extreme, you're starting to get close to what you're actually setting in BIOS. So this is amazing. So um, software readouts, if you were to believe them, uh, they were spiking as high as 1.48 volts. 1.48. CPZ 4.6, this one 4.8. That's absolutely ridiculous. If people who don't have a way of measuring this saw uh, this readout, they would absolutely freak out thinking that they, they were supplying one point, close to 1.5 volts to a CPU, which is absolutely not true because the true voltage here is in fact 1.398. And that brings me to another point. The voltage or load line calibration, which will give you the closest possible result to what you're setting in BIOS is extreme. What extreme will do is it will have a slightly lower idle voltage and it will overvolt by 0.01 volts to reach what you're setting in BIOS. And I found that in 1.4 volts set in BIOS and I found exactly the same thing when I've set 1.35. So if you want the voltage that you're setting in BIOS to be the same voltage under load in Windows, use Extreme. What I've always done, and I've been testing Gigabyte for a good 10 years, so I've always, I've tested these load line calibrations on Intel, AMD platforms over the years, and I've always found that Turbo was the, uh, a perfect medium between um, getting the voltage regulation uh, set and controlled and stable and shot it and it it doesn't basically change in Windows so what I mean by that is if you set 1.4 volts uh, in BIOS you are going to get 1.385 or 1.382 somewhere in that range between load and idle which is basically what you want you want what I, I that's what I love about turbo so my my recommendation would be for you guys to if you are overclocking and you're trying to figure out what setting you're going to do set turbo load line calibration and the voltage that your CPU is stable at and stick with that um, you can do extreme as well obviously as you can see per my graphs it is Quite effective um, so yeah that's that's where it's at